us off in our number 10 spot, the Sumerian Civilization. The ancient Sumerians were a group of people that suddenly became established in Mesopotamia circa 2900 BCE. No one is quite sure where they came from originally, but they believed and documented that their origins were not from planet Earth. According to ancient texts, the Sumerians were created by an alien race called the Anunnaki, who came to Earth after their planet Nibiru collided with another planet in the solar system. The aliens found themselves in short supply of gold, which they needed in their atmosphere, and saw that Earth was in high supply. So they landed here and created a new species that was half alien, half human to mine the gold for them. Now it does sound a little crazy, but the Sumerians were real and they did have advanced scientific, agricultural, and technological knowledge as well as an acute understanding of the solar system, which was highly advanced at their time. Researchers have recorded clay pot batteries that still contained electrodes, a flyable model airplane, as well as an unexplainable capability to cut large stones with exact precision. Not to mention that rockets, airplanes, and helicopters were all depicted on certain artifacts from the time too. Even stranger is that there is mitochondrial DNA evidence linked to a woman in Africa dating more than 100,000 years back near a gold mine. While of course we might never know for sure, the legend of the Anunnaki has made archaeologists question many things, and if it turns out to be true, it would certainly rewrite history. The Baghdad Battery. The Baghdad Battery is a fascinating ancient artifact that was discovered in Iraq in 1936, consisting of a clay jar with a copper cylinder and an iron rod inside. While mainstream archaeologists consider it to be a simple vessel for storing scrolls or valuables, they're not 100% sure. So some folks have entertained a more exciting possibility. Enter the aliens. I think everything I picked has some sort of uh, supposed alien connection, at least according to me, so prepare for that. Some hypothesize that this ancient relic is a sophisticated power device. According to some, ancient civilizations could have been far more advanced than we give them credit for, and they might have harnessed electricity for various purposes, but forget about human ingenuity. Maybe the Baghdad battery was brought to the fine people of Earth with the assistance of a far more advanced species from outer space. Some believe that the ancient astronauts from other worlds visited Earth in the distant past and shared their knowledge of electricity with us. Maybe they left the Baghdad battery as a small gift or a souvenir from their intergalactic journey, offering a glimpse into their advanced technology. Number 8. A Goddess On the western coast of India, there are ruins of a temple to the goddess Patini. Now that part alone is not unheard of, as temples and goddesses are a large part of Hindu However, what is out of the norm is they have found an underground secret chamber that's rumored to hold an underground shrine to the Egyptian goddess Isis. Now the ruins are now owned by a Hindu temple and hence forbidden, so nobody's been able to check what's underneath them. But according to writer Mog Morgan, the idea that it is a secret shrine to the Egyptian goddess is very believable. He theorizes that an Egyptian traveler came to India and started a group dedicated to his own goddess. Isis, and that Patini could be the Indian evolution of the same deity. If only we could get into that chamber to know once and for all. Next up we have the Nazca Lines. The Nazca Lines are a series of ancient uh, geoglyphs located in the Nazca Desert of southern Peru. They depict various shapes, including animals, plants, and geometric patterns. And the exact purpose and meaning of these etchings remains a bit of a mystery. Some theories suggest they might have been used for astronomical or religious purposes purposes, but the strange thing is the scale of the designs means they can really only be appreciated from the air, and people weren't really looking down at the earth 2,000 years ago. So who were these for? Were they used to appease gods, or maybe beings from outer space? There are all kinds of different images depicted, uh, birds, monkeys, various different plants. Probably the strangest one though is what is often referred to by archaeologists as the astronaut. It's obviously a humanoid figure, but the size of the eyes and the shape of its body really does resemble some sort of spacesuit or classic extraterrestrial type being. So 
really leaves you with uh, more questions than answers. Coming in at number six, Pudnama Baswami Temple. In Kerala, India lies a grand temple containing six sealed underground vaults. Now, since its discovery, five of the vaults have actually been opened, and inside they found treasures, jewels, and gold worth millions. But there still remains one vault they have not been able to crack. In 2014, Supreme Court appointed committee members based on alleged mismanagement in the affairs of the temple were appointed to open the forbidden vault. First, they opened the metal grill door and discovered a sturdy wooden door just behind it. They opened this door as well and encountered a third door made of iron, which was jammed shut. The observers tried to force their way in, but failed. So they decided to hire a professional locksmith to open the door, but in mid-July, before the locksmith came, the royal family got an injunction from the Supreme Court against opening Vault B, and by July 2020, the Supreme Court refused to give permission to open the vault, as it was an issue involving religious sentiments. But it has left many wondering, what is behind that last vault? Legend suggests that a spell is what is required to get open the last door, hence why the attempted prying methods used on the other five have been unsuccessful. But archaeologists are keen to hopefully one day be able to see what lies behind the sealed and forbidden vault. Big circles. The big circles are mysterious archaeological features found in various locations across the Middle East. So these structures are massive circular shapes, visible only from above, and are made of stone walls or small stone mounds spread across different locations in the region, like Jordan, Syria, and Turkey. And they vary in size, with some stretching over 400 meters in diameter. But what were they built for? Nobody really knows. One of the most puzzling aspects of the big circles is their age, which is challenging to figure out without any artifacts connected with them or, or written records. Archaeologists have found it tough to date these structures accurately, leading to debates about their origins and the cultures that might have created them. Lots of theories have emerged in an attempt to unravel the purpose of these massive circles. Some researchers have put forward that the circles served as burial sites. Others speculate they may have been used to house animals, but the walls aren't really high enough for that. Most of them are only built like a few feet high. Of course, we have a bit of a similarity here to crop circles, and we all know the conspiracies surrounding them. So yeah, maybe, again, aliens, they could have a hand to play here too. Next up at number four, Four ape bones. At the hill of Tara in Ireland, a set of strange bones were found, but they don't look like bones of a normal person. They belonged to an ape. And to make matters crazier, it's not even the only set of ape bones that have been found in Ireland. But the thing is, nobody knows how these apes managed to get there in the first place. And the only explanation is that someone, a long time ago, was taking apes up to Ireland and burying them there. One theory suggests that the apes might have been traded, but another theory is based on an Irish legend. The ancient legend claims that a group of strangers with magical powers came to Ireland on a massive ship and ruled the people from the Hill of Tara. Some think that the legend was based on a real event, and that the people they thought were magic were really a group of Egyptians with advanced technology. Now, this might seem a little out there, but despite that there are no native monkeys in Egypt itself, ancient Egyptians were incredibly familiar with monkeys, and they have held a permanent place in ancient Egyptian religion as one of the more important animal forms into which the gods might be transformed. On top of that, there's been actual DNA testing done on ancient Irish bodies that suggest they could have an ancestor from the Middle East. And near the Hill of Tara, there are 3,800 year old remains of a boy wearing what appears to be an Egyptian necklace. Next up we have hobbits. In 2003, scientists found some bones in Indonesia on the island of Flores. These bones belong to small human-like species they named Homo floresiensis or Hobbits. The hobbits were tiny, around three feet tall, and were determined to have lived an estimated 50,000 to 100,000 years back. This discovery really changed how we think about our own ancestors. Before it was believed that only our species, Homo sapiens, had big brains and were smarter than other ancient humans, but the hobbits' small brain challenged that idea. It made us realize that early human relatives were more diverse and interesting than we thought. Some researchers think that the hobbits might have come from an earlier 
human group and experienced kind of an island dwarfism adapting to the new environment over time. Small islands can have a weird effect on the animals that live on them, but it's still not 100% known. Find taught us that the story of human evolution is even more complicated than we thought before. Who knows what other species of ancient humans there could have been roaming around that we still, you know, haven't discovered yet. They could also, of course, be aliens, but I, I don't actually know. I don't actually think that. Coming in at number two, Lovelock Cave. In 1911, miners working in Nevada's Lovelock Cave were digging through piles of guano when they stumbled upon a massive wealth of ancient relics. The miners began searching, and as they sifted through the relics, they found something as exciting as it was confusing. The mummified remains of a six foot six man with red hair. With this discovery, the cave became an archaeological dig site, and soon even more strange discoveries were being made. Things like 15-inch sandals which appeared to have been used, as well as a giant handprint that was twice the size of any normal handprint. Now, what is extremely incredible about the discovery is that there is an old Paiute legend that talks about red-haired, freckled-faced, man-eating giants who invaded the land and preyed on the Paiute people until they managed to chase the giants into a cave and set it on fire. And some have reason to believe that this archaeological discovery could actually back up the legend. Sadly, the original red-headed mummy has been destroyed, which makes everything a bit more difficult to prove, but one explanation is that the giants could have been a real group of violent European explorers, people who tormented the indigenous peoples and then met their end in Nevada. The Antikythera mechanism, a very fascinating archaeological discovery that continues to puzzle researchers to this day. It was found in 1901 off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera in the wreckage of an ancient ship. The device seems to be this intricate mechanical calculator believed to date back between 150 and 100 BC. Its purpose and origin still not 100% known, but its complexity is pretty astonishing, especially for the time, meaning that more advanced technology could have been present in ancient times that we're completely unaware of. Some researchers think it was used for astronomical calculations or as a calendar, but it's kind of still speculative. What they do know is that the level of craftsmanship and sophistication involved is pretty impressive. It changed assumptions about ancient technology, and despite extensive research, certain aspects of its design and function remain unknown. At number 10, we have a pit full of arms. I don't think anything nice was ever found at the bottom of a pit. No one has gone to the base of a pit and found a PlayStation 5 with The Last of Us 3. It's almost always death and this pit was no different. Some archaeologists in France came across a super deep pit. Like if you fell in it, you would die 100% of the time. There's no way you're sticking that landing, not at all. So it makes sense at the bottom of this pit, they found a bunch of skeletons from people who had been thrown into the pit. It was a death pit, which is the name of the metal band I'm going to start after this video. Now the thing that was so shocking about the bodies that were thrown into this pit of despair is what happened to the bodies before they were thrown into the pit. All the people had their arms chopped off and their skulls bashed in. Like you're already going to throw the people to their death, why would you mutilate their bodies before you chuck them in? The pit was literally layered, at the bottom layer was all arms and the top layer was all bodies that had their heads smashed in. Like some sort of sick cake. Who would do such a thing? Well, the bodies were dated back to 4000 BC, so their motivations were very unknown, but it's probably just because they were cavemen. At number nine, we have the black sarcophagus. This is my problem with archaeologists. They're always digging around finding things that maybe don't want to be found. Maybe something was buried 20 feet underground because it was never supposed to be opened ever again, like the black sarcophagus. This thing was dug up in 2018, and right away people were saying that this thing was cursed. It got posted all over the internet and it spread around like a mid tier meme. Like, you know, the kind of meme that lasts for like two or three weeks at best. Like, when you look at it, you just blow air out of your nose and then move on. Like, that kind of meme. It wasn't great. Well, everyone said that this thing was going to rain fire from the sky if it was ever opened. I mean, and it does look like something pulled right out of a movie. And guess what the archaeologists did, anyways? They opened it. Oh, this creepy box that might kill everyone? Let's just open it just in case. There might be a boat in there. Who knows? Now, nothing can be connected directly to the sarcophagus, but remember how. How much people were complaining about 2019 and saying a bunch of bad stuff happened? Coincidence? I think not. At number eight, we have head on your chest. How do you want to die? 
This might be something you want to pick because it's the only thing in life that you can guarantee. I want to die on TV saying something cool so my death quote gets turned into a meme like a hundred times. It's like all over the internet. I want my death to be turned into like an infinity war level meme, like a huge level meme. Also side note, Thanos did nothing wrong. But I don't think that these guys got to pick their death. There were some weird bodies that were discovered in England. They were dated back to the 14th century. The weird thing about these bodies that they were all buried laying flat with their heads propped up on their chest like they were holding a basketball. Which means that someone was chopping off these dudes heads before before they sent them into the ground. Not the most fun way to die, but at least they got to keep their head. They didn't start kicking it around like a soccer ball or something. If I was one of the guys in charge, I would bury them, but I would switch their heads around so the person finding them would have to do a match game to match up the right heads. At number seven, we have puzzle time. Did you know that if you throw a person's body into a bog and it's cold enough, it will help preserve the body? Well, I didn't know this either until I started making this list. Well, there was a dude in Scotland who found some bodies that had been buried for hundreds of years, but it seemed like before they were buried, someone had been doing some bog therapy on them to keep them in a preserved state. This is slightly creepy, but let's kick it up a notch. There were two bodies found, a man and a woman. Both of their bodies were very strange. There were limbs and body parts that seemed to be too large for their frame, almost like it was some sort of mutation. Everyone was confused. Well, thanks to the magic of DNA, the people digging up these bodies were able to find out that this happened because someone had been taking different body parts from several dead bodies and assembling them to make some sort of creation. Very creepy. And some of the mismatched body parts were hundreds of years older than the others. How did someone find bodies that were hundreds of years old and why did they try to attach them to other people's bodies? That's something we will never know. At number six, we have the cheese. Usually people digging around in Egypt want to find a gold tomb that is filled with guys wrapped in toilet paper. But every now and again you find something a little more strange. A tomb in Egypt had a little snack inside waiting to be dug up. Why would this be on a list of scary things? Well because the cheese was over 3,000 years old and was packed with some unknown bacteria. If someone was dumb enough to bite into this cheese they could unleash a plague that could wipe out humanity as we know it. Death would sweep through the world and ravage every last man, woman, and child. There would be nowhere on earth that you would be able to be safe from the terrors of this bloody cheese. People would become cheese monsters, like all the creatures that walk around in The Last of Us, except they would smell like Parmesan. Well, either that or the dude would just get the worst diarrhea of his life, like poop water for like eight weeks straight or something. Really, either is possible when you weigh it out. At number five, we have Wolverine-ish. For this next one, it really depends on what part of the story you look at to whether or not this will be a nightmare to you. So in Italy, a body was found from someone who seemed to be from the 8th century. He was a pretty old dude, and this guy had his arm chopped off right above the elbow. Now that is the scary part, someone amputating part of your body. No one wants to have their arm chopped off at any joint. But in place of his missing forearm was a big knife. This guy had a stump, and then at the end of it was an engineered prosthetic that had a knife on it. He had a knife hand, which I think is cool as hell. This guy could be walking around in the year 800 punch stabbing people like a G. Punch stab, punch stab, punch stab, punch stab, punch stab. This guy's cool as hell. But I can understand why that would scare people because you never want to be on the bad end of a guy punch stabbing you. At number four we have a gnawing sensation. The body of a Roman woman had a little surprise in her nether regions. And let me tell you it was not a sexy one. Not everything below the bell gets hot. In fact this was one of the most gross things that has ever been discovered and I never want to come in contact with anything like this ever again. Well this lady was found with a tumor in her pelvis. Elvis. What was crazy about it is that the tumor was caused by an infected egg inside of her womb. This would cause the egg to partially develop and the tumor had teeth in it. Ugh. That sounds like something that should be pulled out of a horror movie. The living tumor that has come to take over your planet. You will all be slaves to this toothy monster. Because this lady happened to die before x-rays were even a concept, there's a good chance she had no idea what dental danger was inside her body. At number three we have vampires. As much as we complain about the world, it's nice to know that things used to be way worse. Like maybe you don't like your job or maybe you were stuck in traffic or maybe even got dumped. But at least you weren't tortured to death because people thought you were a vampire. A tomb in Bulgaria uncovered a man from the 1200s who seemed to be horribly murdered. Most likely by people who thought he was some sort of vampiric monster. It seemed that he was forced into a grave and then someone took a bladed weapon to his leg and hacked it off. And because the only way to kill a vampire is to stab it through its heart, they hammered a steel stake through this dude's chest pinning him to his own grave. Jokes on them, you have to use a wooden stick. So this guy rose from the dead to 
seek revenge. Just kidding, he died for sure. He was for sure dead. At number two, we have Pit of Sorrow. Something this list has taught me is that things have definitely got nicer over time. I know the world isn't perfect, but this next point shows how commonplace brutality used to be. There was a pit found in Austria that had an entire tribe of people in it. 94 bodies were found and they were all dated back to 5200 BC. Now how did all these people from the tribe die in the same place? Well they were attacked and from the looks of it, it seemed like the opposing tribe came in to wipe them all out. Everyone in the pit had their head cracked open and then had their knees and legs snapped and some of them had arrowheads lodged in their backs. The thing that sent this over the edge is that 27 of the 94 bodies were children. This tribe, the attacking tribe made sure that everyone was dead except for women. There were only two female bodies found in the gravesite, so this most likely means that the women were all taken into slavery. All right, for the number one spot, we have some hidden tunnels that were dug up in Chavinduantar in Peru. The tunnels zigzagged into all sorts of hidden rooms that could have been used as some sort of hiding place or escape route from invading tribes. But it seemed that the main thing that the tunnels were used for was sacrificing people in rituals. Several bodies were discovered that were dismembered in all sorts of strange ways. They would be strapped down to altars and then mutilated to death. Some of them had their heads chopped off and others seemed to have their hearts pulled out of their chest while they were still alive. Imagine someone putting a bag over your head in the middle of the night and then dragging you to some horrible underground lair and then cutting your still beating heart out of your chest. That's one hell of a Friday night. Starting off this countdown, we have the Sinners. During construction near Oxford United Football Stadium, workers discovered a very creepy burial ground. The burial site had around 100 skeletons and it's thought that they were 600 to 900 years old. The bones included someone with leprosy, someone who suffered a blunt force trauma, and a woman buried face down. What came of most interest to researchers was this woman. Typically women were buried face down if they were an accused witch or if they were a sinner. Researchers believe that this woman was actually a nun who was accused of getting it on with the priests. It was thought that if you bury any sinner's face down, then this prevents the impure soul from threatening the living. Hence why she was buried face down. Moving on to number 9, we have the vampires. During the construction of a roadway near Gliwice in Poland, they came across what they thought were the remains of World War II soldiers. However, upon investigating, it was discovered that the remains belonged to vampires. Well, people who were accused of being vampires. They found that their heads had been chopped off and then placed on their legs. This was done to ensure that the dead stayed dead. Others were found with punctured spines or their heads wedged between heavy stones. Again, this was all preventative measures done to ensure that the vampires don't rise out of their graves. But these vampires were mainly people who suffered from diseases or deformities, which caused them to behave strangely. And strange or unusual behavior meant that you were evil. In our 8th spot, we have the Neanderthal family. Archaeologists in Spain discovered the remains of a family of 12 Neanderthals. But sadly, this family succumbed to a tragic fate around 49,000 years ago. The bodies were found with marks all over their bodies, leading researchers to believe that they were killed by a cannibalistic Neanderthal family. Yep, they were eaten alive by another family. So the bodies had thin slashes on their bones from tools, thought to be from the cannibals hitting the bones to break them, and then they would feast on the bone marrow. Then evidence suggests that when they were finished, they used the victim's bones to sharpen the edge of their own tools. In our seventh spot, we have the Screaming Mummies. The first Screaming Mummy was found in 1886 by Dier El Bari. We call it the Screaming Mummy because the mummy was found with its mouth hanging wide open, looking like it was screaming. Then over the years, more and more Screaming Mummies were discovered. And this became a huge mystery. Were they buried alive or tortured? Why did they look like that? Researchers had no idea for the longest time. Now, the mummy that Dier was analyzing, he assumed that he had just been poisoned and his mouth was open because when the poison was slowly kicking into effect, 
He knew what was happening and was shocked. But new evidence suggests that he was actually hung. But turns out that most of these mummies look like they're screaming because they were poorly wrapped. Yep, it's as simple as that. The jaw wasn't wrapped tight enough, so the mouth ended up naturally falling open. Nonetheless, they look a thousand times creepier than other mummies. Making our way down the list number six, we have the bog bodies. Over 15 years ago, a group of archaeologists were exploring an area in Scotland when they came across some very creepy bodies. The bodies were of one female and one male who died about 3,000 years ago. But because of the state that they were in, it was believed that their bodies were thrown into a bog where they mummified for about 300 to 600 years. After that, they were taken out and buried. But something was off about these bodies. The woman's jaw was too large for her skull, and the man's limbs were off. Well, turns out that these bodies were the combination of six different people fused together, like some sort of Frankenstein monster. The female was combined with body parts from several other people who died around the same time as her, whereas the male had body parts from people who died hundreds of years before him. And the bones weren't just pushed together, no, they were actually attached properly. So why would someone do this and who did this? It's so creepy. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the sacrifices. Now, it's not new news that the Aztecs were a big fan of bloody sacrifices, but it's still quite shocking to come across sacrificial burial spots, because this next find revealed just how gruesome these rituals can get. So in 2004, a team discovered a number of decapitated and mutilated bodies outside of Mexico City. The bodies belonged to humans and animals. These rituals were performed as a way to feed the gods. It was believed that if you let the gods go hungry, then the sun would stop rising and the world would come to its end. In this burial spot, they found several skulls stuck together on a post, and others with holes in their head that were once used for decoration. I mean, it may not look so bad now, but imagine back in the day when the skulls still had the victim's skin and eyes and hair on it. Eey. In our fourth spot, we have the sunken skulls. In 2009, while excavating a dry lake bed in Motala, Sweden, a bunch of strange artifacts were found. There was a pile of animal bones, stone tools, and a bunch of skulls with stakes plunged through their heads. These skulls are 8,000 years old, and experts have no clue what happened to them. In fact, there's even one skull that has pieces of other skulls shoved up inside of it. Yeah, pretty disgusting. They think that this was either part of their funeral practices, or it was created as some sort of trophy by warriors who defeated their opponents. Moving on to number three, we have the shackled skeletons. In 2016, a group of 80 skeletons were found buried in Athens, Greece. But these skeletons were found chained up with iron shackles still around their wrists. They are believed to be prisoners who died around 650 BC and 625 BC. These skeletons were found with terrified expressions plastered on their faces. Their necks were flexed and their jaws hung wide open. Studies showed that all the skeletons were males who suffered horrific deaths. They were chained up while an executioner went down the line, killing these men one by one while the others watched, waiting their turn. They were ruthless back in the day. I just want to know what these men did. In our second spot, we have the expedition bones. Back in 1845, Sir John Franklin led two ships filled with 129 men to explore the Canadian Arctic in search of the Northwest Passage. However, along the way, the ships ended up getting stuck in ice, and they all faced a chilling death. But thanks to the ice, the bodies of the crewmen were preserved. In the 1980s and the 1990s, researchers recovered the remains of the crew on King William Island, and they found some pretty terrifying things. It was thought that the crew resorted to cannibalism for the last couple of days. They had food aboard the ship, but many were sick from scurvy, tuberculosis, hypothermia, and pneumonia, 
which made them disoriented and a little wild. The crew were found with cut marks all over their body, indicating that their flesh was cut off the bones and eaten. On other men, their bones had been cracked open and the bone marrow was feasted on. What a very gruesome death. And in our number one spot, we have the severed hands. While doing a number of digs in Abaris, Egypt, one archaeologist found four different pits filled with severed hands. Yep. Nothing else, just piles and piles of hands. Each hand belonged to a different person, and they had been buried there 3,600 years ago. Now, before you think there's like some morbid hand serial killer on the loose, no, there actually is an explanation for this. But I don't think it makes it less creepy. So back in the day, it was a practice to actually remove the hand of your enemy. It was thought that by doing so, you would steal their power. You then could trade these hands in for a reward. The hands were then buried into these ceremonial pits. I'm just glad that this isn't a practice anymore. Starting off this countdown, we have the dog bones. In 2012, archaeologist Karina Gutierrez was excavating a site between the zebra and hippo pens of a zoo in Peru when she came across something very gruesome and shocking. She unearthed more than 100 dogs resting alongside hundreds of humans. This site is said to be more than 900 years old. The human remains showed signs of torture and violence, suggesting that they died a gruesome death. The dogs, on the other hand, were ritually strangled. It's thought that they were buried alongside their owners as part of a ceremony. This is a very, very dark thing to come across. Coming in at number nine, we have the impaled heads. In 2009, a new railway bridge was being created in Sweden's Motala Strom River. That's when archaeologists started to unearth artifacts that were thousands of years old. Over the next few years, more and more artifacts were found in that area. You got animal bones to tools made from animal bones to remnants of human skulls, and lastly, mounted skulls. This is said to be the most grisly thing that archaeologists in that area have found. So the skulls were 8,000 years old and were impaled on wooden stakes. All skulls were missing their jaw bones and had shown signs of trauma. The male skulls had blunt force trauma to the top of the head, while the female skulls had trauma to the sides and back of their head. But that's not the way that they died. Studies had shown that the wounds had healed, so they did not die immediately after sustaining those injuries. Then at some point, the victims' heads were chopped off and placed on stakes and then submerged underwater in the middle of the lake. They were placed on a stone platform surrounded by animal bones. Again, this is a very traumatizing thing to come across. In our eighth spot, we have the witch prison. In 2016, historians were restoring St. Mary's Chapel at the Kirk of St. Nicholas when they found a weird ring mounted into the wall. Dr. Arthur Winfield, who was leading this project to restore and preserve the chapel, was pretty skeptical about this ring. At first, he thought it was nothing, but then he decided to do some digging. He checked out the city's archives, and that's when he discovered the chapel's dark past. Back in 1597, the church played a crucial role in the Great Witch Hunt. The witches were taken to the chapel and chained up to this ring. This was their last stop before being executed and burned to death. So all of a sudden, this ring became much, much darker. After excavating the area, the bodies of 22 young individuals were unearthed. No remains of the accused witches were found at the site, so it's believed that they were buried elsewhere. This iron ring embedded into the north wall of the chapel is now all that remains of this gruesome past. In our seventh spot, we have Lascaux Caves. Legend goes that back in the day, four teens were exploring this cave system in France with their dog when they found a narrow entrance to a cavern. Being brave, they entered and that's when they found an archaeologist's dream. The cavern was filled with prehistoric cave paintings. These paintings are 15 to 17,000 years old and depict a series of images including tons of animals. In total, there are 600 wall paintings covering the interior walls and ceilings of this cave. In 1948, this site was open to the public. People were welcome to come into the cave and see the beautiful paintings. 
but in 1963 it had to be closed. The artificial light was fading the vivid colors of these paintings. It also caused algae to start growing over them. So in order to preserve the history, no one is allowed to visit there. In fact, only a small number of scientists are allowed in, but they only have a few days a month to be in there. Other than that, they are kept locked away. Moving on to number six, we have the East Kirk of St. Nicholas. So over the years, more work has been done on the Kirk of St. Nicholas. In 2006 and 2007, it was the site of a major archeological excavation. Basically, they were excavating the site before the restoration work could be done. Well, upon doing so, they came across the remains of more than 2,000 people. 1,000 were the remains of entire skeletons, so they weren't missing any parts. It's believed that most of the bodies were buried before the 1560s, because after that, the Protestant Reformation in Scotland banned the burials of people inside churches. They also found the graves of nine young individuals whose body had been laid out together, forming an arc shape. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with El Dorado. The last city of El Dorado is a famous myth that dates back to the 16th century. El Dorado is the name of a secret city of gold said to be located deep within South America. It's said to be filled with riches beyond your wildest dreams. When the Spanish conquistadors heard of this tale, they tried with all their power to find the city of gold. Alas, they were unsuccessful. But legend goes that archaeologists have discovered this city, and if they have, of course they don't want this known to the public. At least, not yet. Could you imagine what would happen if word got out that there is a city filled with priceless artifacts and gold? People would go nuts and totally ransack the place and ruin its beauty. So that's why it's believed that this place is being kept a secret. That is until they have removed all the treasures and have done all the research that they need to. Coming in at number four, we have the ancient city of Aleppo. This is known as Syria's second city and is said to be among the world's oldest continuously inhabited cities. It's filled with ancient structures and has one of the oldest and biggest castles around the world. But here's the thing, this site is now an endangered world heritage site. The overpopulation and commercialization is taking a toll on this beautiful ancient city. The new developments and overcrowding have threatened the ancient cityscape, which is like every archaeologist's worst nightmare. Moving on to number three, we have their labs. After a big dig, archaeologists bring their findings back to the lab. What happens there is pretty private. Every single artifact that they find is washed, dried, identified, labeled, and then cataloged. All of this is done with precision and care. Imagine how much crap they would get in if they dropped or broke an artifact. Obviously, for many reasons, archaeologists like to keep their lab a secret, and I don't blame them. Imagine your personal workspace being available for everyone in the world to see. Coming in at number two, we have Dead Man's Island. The Dead Man's Island in the UK is now a forbidden island. No one is allowed to travel there unless you receive special permission, but no one wants to go there anyways. Not only is it rumored to be haunted, but it's filled with dead bodies. Basically, the island was the dumping ground for men and boys who died while on board prison ships. They didn't want to bring them back to the mainland, so they buried them on this island to prevent infectious diseases from spreading. But over the years, coastal erosion and the tides unearthed these bodies. In 2016, the remains of more than 200 men were found on the island. They were then reburied. But the changing tides continued to unearth the bodies and wash them out to sea. So they kind of just gave up and left the island and all of its bodies alone. And in our number one spot today, we have the lost city of Atlantis. I'm sure you all grew up hearing tales about the magical lost city of Atlantis that lay submerged somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. Well, it turns out this city might be real. First, let's look at the history of this city. Atlantis was first described by Plato over 2,000 years ago. He said that the island had over 10,000 chariots and hundreds of bulls and elephants. Then over the years, the city fell and eventually got submerged into the Atlantic Ocean. For centuries, historians debated whether the city was real or not. Then in 1882, a man named Ignatius Donnelly published a book titled Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. In this book, he claimed that Atlantis was a real place. He even claimed that all the known ancient civilizations originated from Atlantis's Neolithic culture. If this is real, then surely archeologists and historians are madly searching for the city. In fact, they might have found it already and similar to El Dorado, they are keeping it a secret. 
Starting off this countdown, we have The Missing Couple. Back on August 15, 1942, husband and wife Marcelin and Francine Dumoulin of Switzerland went out to milk their cows and never returned home. Their seven children wondered what happened to them for years, and they never gave up hope. 75 years later, their last remaining child got the answer. Their bodies were found frozen in the Alps after a glacier covering them melted. Researchers believe that the couple had fallen into a crevice, which they stayed trapped in until they froze to death. The only photos released to the public were the items that they found next to the bodies, like their hiking boots and destroyed clothing. Actual photos of their frozen corpse has not been released due to respect of the family, but also for our own sake. It would be pretty gruesome to see a body frozen to death. In our ninth spot, we have the bones in a tree. In 2015, Colony Ireland was hit with a massive winter storm. As a result, a number of trees were uprooted, including a 250-year-old tree. What people didn't know is that this tree was hiding a very, very dark secret. Entangled in the roots of this tree was a mass of bones. After investigating, they found the bones belonged to a young fellow who died between the year 1030 and 1200. To make it worse, his ribs and hands had knife marks, suggesting that he was attacked, murdered, and then buried there. Here is a picture of the tree, but photos of the lad's bones in the tree roots has not been shared with the public. In our eighth spot today, we have the bog bodies. This discovery actually happened quite recently in terms of archaeology. It just happened over 15 years ago. A group of archaeologists were exploring an area in Scotland when they came across a number of bodies. But these were unlike any skeletal remains that they have ever seen before. No, these bodies were the combination of six different people fused together. Let me explain. The bodies were of one female and one male, who died about 3,000 years ago. But because of the state that they were in, it's believed that their bodies were thrown into a bog where they mummified for about 300 to 600 years, and then after that they were actually taken out and buried. So that right there is commitment. After analyzing the bodies, they realized that the woman's jaw was way too large for her skull, and the man's limbs were all off. Well, turns out the female was combined with body parts from several others that died around the same time as her, whereas the male had body parts from people who died hundreds of years before him. And the bones weren't just pushed in together, they were actually attached properly. This has still baffled researchers. They literally found a bunch of Frankenstein bodies or something, and we don't know how they were created. Was this part of some weird ritual? Was this the works of a serial killer? Or did the bog somehow fuse them together? Honestly, we might never know. The Medieval Home for Nuns. Back in 2015, British archaeologists made a pretty disturbing discovery that left them speechless. Over in Oxford, England, while excavating Littlemore Priory, which is a medieval home for nuns, they found 92 skeletons. These skeletons date back to between 600 and 900 years old. Lead archaeologist Paul Murray said, and I quote, We knew the church was there and we knew we could find something, but the number of burials was a real surprise. Some of the remains they found belonged to a person with leprosy, who most likely was shunned because of their disease. They also found a skull from someone who died from blunt force trauma to their head, and a nun that was buried face down. Face down burials were meant for people who were either witches, or accused of witchcraft, or a sinner. In this case, they think that that nun was promiscuous and was getting on with priests, which is a sin, and so she was killed and buried with her face down. Photos from the site have not been released due to how unsettling they are. In our sixth spot, we have the Pit of Amputated Arms. In 2015, a team working in France got a terrifying glimpse into the past after stumbling upon this next discovery. They found seven severed arms that had been brutally chopped off, probably when the victims were still alive, and then the arms were thrown into the bottom of a pit. The pit and arms date back to 6,000 years ago, and researchers believe that the arms belong to farmers. To make matters worse, the arms were at the bottom of the pit, and on top of it were dozens of bodies just piled on. The bodies on top still had their arms attached, so they weren't the victims of the severed arms but they had their skulls crushed in. It's still not clear what happened to these people. We don't know who killed them or why their arms were removed in the first place. All we know is that it's evidence of a horrible massacre. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with humans eating other humans. 
In 2019, archaeologists working at a site in southwest Germany came across 1,000 human remains. The remains were unearthed near a village from a 7,000-year-old human burial site. Now, archaeologists come across bones all the time. To them, it's no big deal, but these bones were. These people weren't just killed, they had their skulls scraped clean. The ribs had been peeled from the vertebrae, and some of the bones were snapped in half and their marrow had been sucked out. So this was evidence that humans attacked them, killed, and then ate them. Moving on at number four, we have the Witch Bottle. Back in 2019, a number of artifacts known as the Witch Bottle were found in homes in England. One of them was found in a chimney of a pub during demolition. Now, witches' bottles are really quite strange. The one in the chimney contained fish hooks, human teeth, and urine. Other bottles have been composed of fingernails, human hair, bent pins, nails, shards of glass, and thorns. Typically, they are found in churchyards, riverbanks, or old buildings. They were made as a way to ward witches off. Apparently, the urine attracted the witches to the bottle, and then they would be trapped by the pins or the other sharp objects. I mean, it's kind of cool, but also it's definitely a strange find. Moving on to number three, we have the whale vertebra. Archaeologists excavating a Scottish Iron Age site in 2016 came across something they never thought in a million years they would find. They found a hollowed out whale vertebra that was then filled with a human jawbone and the remains of two newborn lambs. Definitely an interesting collection of things. These items date back to about the mid 2nd century AD. And to this day, it still baffles scientists. Did the people back then hunt down this whale or was it washed up on shore? The bigger question is why? Why did they take it, hollow it out, and then put things inside? And whose skull is that? Not only that, but the whale vertebra was held in place by a pair of red deer antlers and a large grinding stone. So this mystery just keeps getting weirder and weirder. In our second spot, we have these shackled skeletons. In 2016, a number of archaeologists were excavating a site in Athens, Greece, when they came across something straight out of a horror film. They found a group of 80 skeletons chained up with iron shackles around their wrists. To make matters worse, the skeletons had a terrified expression plastered on their faces. Their necks were flexed and their jaws hung open wide. Studies showed that all the skeletons were males who suffered horrific deaths. These skeletons belonged to prisoners from around 650 BC. Their death was very gruesome. They were all chained up and then an executioner went down the line killing these men one by one while the others watched just waiting their turn. So no wonder why they look like they're screaming for their lives because they probably were and that is absolutely horrifying. And in our number one spot today we have the hollowed out tree trunk. In 2019, in Switzerland, archaeologists stumbled upon an Iron Age Celtic woman placed inside of a hollowed out tree trunk. This acted as her coffin. She was placed there in a dress made out of sheep's wool, a sheepskin coat, and shawl. She was also buried alongside amber and glass necklaces, bronze bracelets, and other valuables, meaning she must have been a very important figure of her time. Archaeologists found the grave while renovating a school complex and they were completely stunned, as anyone would be. Imagine being like, oh, what a nice tree trunk. Wait, there's a body in there. That's how I imagine their reaction was. Photos have not been released to the public, only animated like reenactment photos have. First up, in our 10th spot today, we have screaming mummies. Okay, when you think of a classic mummy, what do you see? I'm going to assume you just replied, I see the mummy's face, and it looks like it's screaming as its mouth is, you know, wide open. For a very long time, it was believed that mummies found with their mouth open were possibly people that were tortured to death, especially those found with their hands bounded together. But in most recent years, scientists have learned how silly that theory might be because most mummies are actually found with that permanent screaming expression. During the mummification process, if the jaw isn't strapped shut, then the jaw naturally falls open when it begins to decay. But then again, we're also sure that some of the mummies were most likely buried alive, but it is possible that it could be too hard at this point to fully know. In our number nine spot today is the mass grave of the headless Vikings. Ah. 
It was a sunny day. Just another casual digging expedition for these archaeologists, digging up the side of an old roadway in Dorset, UK. But suddenly, they dug up something extraordinary. It was a grave site for 54 Vikings, and they were all headless. The leg and arm bones and heads and torsos were all together neatly in separate piles. The archaeologists didn't know what to make of this, so their theory was that these people were captured by the locals and they were murdered and dismembered by the villagers who took some of their heads for souvenirs. Well that's terrifying. Later on they revamped that theory and they believed that perhaps that this was some kind of ritualistic sacrifice performed at this time. Yeah, perhaps scientists didn't want us to know this because, well, that is terrifying. Coming up in today's eighth spot, we have something that I personally think is highly unsettling, and I would like to inquire as to why wasn't this on the news stations everywhere around the world when it was discovered? Because this one is kind of hard to believe that it is real. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's just a cat that was carved into the hills of Peru. Yep, a cat. Come on, a cat? <laughs> That's so creepy. I mean, I'm a dog person myself, so perhaps I'm a little biased, but I mean, cultures have been known to worship and honor the cat throughout centuries, including the Egyptians and, well, North Americans nowadays. They have, you know, a lot of crazy cat ladies, but who knows? Maybe there's a higher reason that cats were continuously worshiped and perhaps we should honor them. This cat geoglyph was found in the Nazca Desert and it is said to be the oldest one in its region, dating to 200 BC to 100 BC. The cat is apparently 120 feet. Wow, how isn't this more known? I'm mind blown. All the crazy cat Karens are saying, um, excuse me, I knew this. Coming up in our seventh spot today, we have the Tomb of Sunken Skulls. Found in the bottom of a prehistoric dry lake bed in Motala, Sweden, archaeologists stumbled upon a mysterious stone structure. After some digging, they were able to eventually unearth animal bones, stone tools, and 8,000 year old skulls of 10 people aging from young to old. Sometimes it's hard for me to fathom that it is possible for archaeologists to know that something is really that old. Like how is this possible that we are able to know this and yet we haven't made a time machine yet? But also, if you really sit and think about how far we've come in the last 100 years, it really makes you think, holy, I wish I could travel in time to see how people actually lived them. Because even with our discoveries to paint a picture, it's still quite hard to imagine. They also found fragments of one skull deliberately put into the skull of another. What purpose was this for? The archaeologists concluded that actually 11 people were butchered in a stone hut with no other discovery as to why. But one last final horrific detail some of the skulls had stakes embedded into them, and it was concluded that they were perhaps mounted for some funeral purpose or as a sort of trophy after the defeat of its opponents. In our sixth spot today, we have a discovery that honestly, I wish I didn't know about. For all the mothers out there that are feeling a little sensitive, definitely, you know, close your ears to this one. While on an expedition deep in the underground sewer in Ashkelon, Israel, expecting to only find dirt and, well, poop. <laughs> Archaeologists discovered thousands of tiny bones. After further inspection, they discovered that the bones were of newborn babies. Maybe around a hundred of newborn babies. Just horrible. It wasn't completely uncommon though for ancient times to dispose of newborns, particularly girls who were considered not as valuable to the family as boys. But it is interesting though that there were actually quite a few boys that were found. It was and still is so curious that those bones were disposed of in a sewer. If I could guess, I think this sounds like the case of some religious sacrifice. But who knows? In our fifth spot today, we have the Mammoth Graveyard. An expedition in Russia led to a discovery of what looks like a graveyard of mammoth bones from 25,000 years ago. The site has been under excavation since 2014, and it is said that it measures 40 feet across. Whoa. At this point, archaeologists still don't know how it was built, and also why. <laughs> what was the purpose of this? I suspect aliens, you know, aliens came down to Earth and had a sacrificial mammoth ceremony and then gathered all of the bones in one area and left them for us humans to eventually clean up. That sounds possible. In our fourth spot today, we have severed hands. While on an Egyptian expedition, a group of archaeologists whom were digging near the ancient city of Averis discovered a few chopped off hands. The hands were found in what was once a throne room and therefore there was an immediate understanding that this was some kind of gesture for the king. The team ended up discovering 
discovering 14 hands and the even more interesting part, it was all right hands. The hands are about 3,600 years old. Eventually, it was discovered that they were buried when King Kyan ruled over the city. Only through reviewing ancient writing were they able to put the pieces together and see that during this time, the soldiers would present a severed right hand of his enemy to the king in exchange for gold. It was said to be a symbolic gesture, showing that they are depriving their enemy of power as they will no longer have their hand. Fascinating. It's crazy to believe that we humans once were in a headspace where we were chopping off hands so as to take other humans humans power away from them. Ah, <laughs> fascinating. In our third spot today, we have the good old Neanderthals. Archaeologists have discovered that some 40,000 years ago, Belgians, also known as Neanderthals, were practicing cannibalism. They used to make a meal out of their friends and create tools out of their bones. At least they weren't wasteful. This discovery was made in a cave where Neanderthal bones were discovered along with marks of butchery. There were also bones of horses and other animals in the cave, but they seemed to be stripped apart just like the human bones were, leading the archaeologists to conclude that these Neanderthals seemed to make no distinction between man and animal, which poses the question, at what point did we start making this distinction? And are there still people who don't? Google the conspiracies around this at your own risk. In our second spot today, we have the claw. In 1986, while on an expedition on Mount Owen in New Zealand, a giant claw was found. Deep within a cave in the mountain, the archaeologists discovered this massive beast-like claw. It was eventually discovered that it was the 3,000-year-old remains of an upland moa, a flightless bird that went extinct, which you would think to be impossible as well. It kind of reminds me of how all the Kardashian-like girls wear their nails these days? I mean, how do they function with those nails? I can barely type and I barely have nails. <laughs> ah, Melissa. <laughs> in our number one spot today, we have the chemical warfare. On an expedition in 1933, archaeologist Robert de Misnil du Boisson discovered 19 Roman soldiers in a tunnel. Apparently, they all look like they died trying to flee from something. I can't imagine what during those times. Traces of sulfur and bitumen were actually found along the walls until it was eventually discovered that all signs point to this being one of the first attempts at chemical warfare. Whoa. And honestly, hopefully one of the last. That's all I'm saying. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the SS Walling Bar 2. Quite recently, just a few years ago, just off of the east coast of Australia, the wreckage of the ship was discovered. This ship sank in 1943 during the war after being struck by two torpedoes sent from a Japanese submarine. The ship sank in just minutes, with only five crew members surviving and the rest of the 32 on board sadly losing their lives. The acting minister for veterans at the time, Jeff Lee, said, quote, This secret has been hidden at the bottom of the deep sea for decades, and this find will give some closure for the descendants and relatives of the 32 people who lost their lives. Another interesting fact about the sinking of this ship is that when it went down, it was carrying boxes of butter and bacon, which then went on to be washed up on the shores. This led to a huge influx of cake baking, which in this time was normally restricted because of the food rationing. In our number nine spot today, we have a German bomb. This is one discovery that was definitely found accidentally. In August of 2015, construction workers in East London found something that I don't think anyone was expecting when they unearthed an unexploded 500 pound German bomb from World War II that, if detonated, could easily destroy the surrounding homes and buildings. Yeah, not terrifying at all, right? Of course, this site was immediately blocked off and 700 people ended up being evacuated until things could return to normal safely. The British Army's Royal Logistics Corps Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit took 24 terrifying hours to make this device safe, which thankfully they were able to do without incident. It is thought that there are likely many more of these scary undetonated bombs around because they are the result of bombs that were dropped but failed to go off. Some didn't go off and won't ever because they were made in error, but most of them just had simple technical difficulties that now, if mishandled, could cause the bomb to detonate. It's all terrifying, but thankfully this one didn't go on to do any 
harm. In our number 8 spot today we have the USS Lexington. In 2018, researchers were able to locate the wreckage of the USS Lexington, which was a US aircraft carrier that was used in the Second World War. This discovery came at the bottom of the Coral Sea, about 800 kilometers off of the coast of Eastern Australia. It is said that the Lexington is one of the capital ships that were lost during the war. It was originally commissioned as a battle cruiser, but in 1925 it was instead launched as an aircraft carrier. From May 4th to May 8th, 1942, this ship and the USS Yorktown faced off against three Japanese carriers in the Battle of the Coral Sea. While both the Lexington and the Yorktown put up a great fight, on May 8th, the Lexington ended up being damaged when it was hit by multiple torpedoes and bombs. This was already bad, but things got much worse when a secondary explosion led to raging fires, which then led to the crew abandoning ship. On the evening of May 8th, in order to prevent the ship from being captured, it was scuttled or deliberately sunk by the USS Phelps, but not until the surviving 2,770 crew members and officers were rescued. Sadly, this was not every member, however, as it is said that 216 people lost their lives in this battle. In our number 7 spot today, we have the USS Nevada. This ship for many years was deemed unsinkable, but after a long resume of battle, that unfortunately wasn't the case. The USS Nevada during the 1941 surprise attack on Pearl Harbor was the only ship to get away in one piece, albeit barely. It took years to repair the ship, but once done, she was returned to battle in 1944 to support the Normandy invasion, and a year after that, it assisted in two more invasions and two atomic bomb tests. After the war ended, they finally decided that, hey, this gal's seen enough, and they decided to retire her, but not before using her as target practice. It took a lot of ammo and five days to do it, but they finally sank the ship with a torpedo being the final strike. After the sinking, the Navy wasn't exactly sure where it would end up. I mean, it was over 15,000 feet below the surface of the ocean, so it really could have gone anywhere. Cut all the way to 2020 during an expedition by Ocean Infinity and Search Inc, and the ship was finally once again located. She ended up just 65 nautical miles southwest of Pearl Harbor. In our number six spot today, we have the aircraft wreck. In 2017, divers discovered not only the remains of a wreck of an American B-24, the Tulsa America bomber that was downed just off of the shores of Croatia in 1944, but inside of the wreck, they also found the remains of those who lost their lives in the incident. This is one of many aircrafts, mostly bombers like this one, that were downed in the area, and that is because of the fact that there was an important Allied airbase there. The wreck was found resting on the seabed about 40 meters down, and there were bones discovered inside, which are said to belong to the pilot and co pilot of the aircraft. They were able to find them by sifting through the sediment underneath the cabin, and their remains were then placed into bags in order to be lifted out of the water and brought to the ship for further analysis. This is most certainly quite a grim discovery, but it allows those who lost their lives to be returned home, and it allows the relatives some sort of closure with their tragic losses. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Backyard Discovery. When I read this story, I was definitely concerned, but it also made me laugh so much. Many of us can understand that uncomfortable feeling of having an issue, but not wanting to bother anyone else about it until the time is right. Sometimes this is just instinct, sometimes this is just politeness, and sometimes you absolutely need to say screw politeness and bother someone because it's an emergency. Nearing the end of 2017, someone in East Poland was digging in their backyard when they accidentally unearthed an unexploded grenade that dates all the way back to World War II. Because it was around the holidays, he didn't want to disturb anyone who might be enjoying time and food with their families, so instead of calling the police, he put it in a bucket filled with sand and placed it in his shed until after the holidays were over. Once the proper people were informed, the area where he found the explosive was examined where more dangerous objects were also found. In the end, military personnel came by to take care of and properly and securely destroy these dangerous findings. In our number Fourth spot today, we have rocket propelled mortar shells. While crews were just doing their job casually clearing up the roadside ditches in northeast Poland, they made a shocking discovery. They uncovered what appeared to be two unexploded explosive devices. After experts were called in and further research was done, these two items turned out to be German 28 centimeter Nebel Warfer shells. Specialists were then able to come and secure the site and the weapons so that they could be taken away for a scheduled detonation, which occurred the following. Day. The weapons are rocket propelled mortar shells that were used with a weapon that would fire them in groups of six, with their maximum range being around 2,200 meters. In our number three spot today, we have a grave. 
In March of 2018, archaeologists in West Poland made a dark discovery when they found a grave that contained the remains of German soldiers that dates back to the Second World War. To make this discovery even more grim, the soldiers were all bound with a blue cord. According to experts, the remains are from 1945, and while the cord looks extremely eerie, they explained that it was likely just used to transport them to the place of burial. According to Archaeofeed.com, quote, along with the remains, researchers of the Pomost Association, who initially found archive documents that led to the discovery of the grave, discovered parts of military uniforms, buttons, and German soldier tags. The researchers did not find any marks that would indicate execution of the soldiers. One of the individuals had his legs broken in a few places. According to archaeologists, the soldiers died in battle, and then they would have later been transported to this spot. In our number two spot today, we have the crash site. During a two month long excavation that was done by a team of soldiers, sailors, and airmen, as well as civilians, they were able to recover and retrieve some human remains that might belong to the long lost American air crews of World War II airplanes. The team worked near an island which, during the war, was the site of a Japanese submarine base and a seaplane ramp. This area was the target of a ton of B 24 bombings and raids by the United States in 1944 and 1945. The team sifted through the sand in the area using large baskets in order to search for the remains. Now that they've located the remains, what happens next? Well, the remains will be analyzed to see if they match the profile of any of the missing service members that are associated with that crash site. If so, then their surviving next of kin will be notified. In our number one spot today, we have the Chuck Lagoon. This lagoon was the site of one of the main bases for Japan during the war, but in 1944, the United States launched an attack on it. During this, 60 ships were sunk, around 250 planes were brought down. It is likely that researchers knew about the significance of this area, but we didn't really get a good look at it for some 70 years. A photographer who goes by the name of Super Jolly went down into this less than jolly area to snap photos of everything that can be seen down there. He called this shoot one of the scariest dives he's ever done in his life, and I can completely understand why. The area is filled with human skulls, gas masks, and bullets, and many of the artifacts down here are extremely well preserved, which is great for research, but also just so haunting. This area most definitely serves as a haunting reminder of the realities of a world war.